So um, assessment number three for 1577 design skills is um, one of the most complex assessments in that particular subject. Because first of all, it requires you guys to do the research, okay? Mm -hmm. And research needs to be done on statistics, correct? Mm -hmm. The statistics which should be taken out of your particular area you live in or the area you want to investigate. Okay, so I'm going to show you some examples for student, um, students done previously. And we're going to have a look at um, each. Oh, I just realized it's assessment two, not assessment three. <laughs> oh, okay, so, so you work in on Which is the, the chair upholstery uh, uh, so far. Um, okay. So we'll look so, at it. I actually there. have read forward and I know the one that you're talking about, which is why I realized that's assessment three and I'm talking about okay. assessment two. <laughs> okay, no problem. So we'll have a look at assessment three first. Yeah. For Daniel, and then we'll look at assessment uh, number two, which is mm -hmm. uh, 3D design of upholstery. Yes. Okay, excellent. But the other one's not far away from me anyway, so. <laughs> no, that's true. Okay, so let's have a look what we've got here. Um, Wait, do you have to present the, third, the second assessment? Do you have to, sorry? Do you have to present it? Uh, well, it's desirable for you guys to present all your assessments. Okay, because I don't think I did because I haven't had an online lesson since I got back from Bali because I've just been like here, there and everywhere kind of thing, <laughs> just organising stuff. I understand. I Not every time you can make it, but as long as you submit your speech, that's sufficient enough for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't think I've submitted a speech for it, but I can do that if you want me to, or I can present it. For, uh, for which assessment are you talking about? Assessment two. The chair. Oh, there was an explanation. That was enough. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Okay, so let's have a look at Emily's assessment, the first one I stumbled on. So I'm just going to quickly share the screen with you. Now you should be able to see the assessment, okay? Yes. Yeah. So what Emily's done here is that she actually researched the local demographics. Mm -hmm. That's where she's from, uh, East Umwa. Mm -hmm. and so first of all, she put a population here. That's what's required. Um, the growth of the population. Oops, that was stupid. Um, then she put the statistics. Okay, so you can see here that she's taken statistics from the census website. Mm -hmm. So that's where you can go and take statistics from for your particular area. So it's very easy. It will generate that table by itself. Um, okay, then ethnicity as well. So you, you can take all the information from that particular website. Okay, so gonna... Oh, okay, so I've got smaller slide me. One, two. Okay, then um, she put ancestry in there. So basically um, the country of origin, mm -hmm. uh, religion, okay, uh, employment, industry sector of employment as well. So she's taken that again from the census. Uh, what else we've got here? Then she researched upcoming, uh, upcoming international trends. That's what um, Danielle had problem with. Yeah. Uh, she's taken it from different websites. So your job is basically go online, go to the library, collect some magazines, you know, the latest uh, interior design trends, look through the kitchen as a topic and um, basically put some images in and whatever you're inspired by and etc. into that particular page. Collect a few images. What I like what she's done here is she went through um, 
every trend. So color trends, um, furniture trends, um, mm -hmm. wall finishes trends, um, accessories trends, um, very good on the floorboards, etc. So she went through all the interior design elements which required. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next one. So she looked at the particular materials. She looked at the particular kitchen styles she liked. She explained what sets provided. She looked at a, um, why she put it in here, and etc. So now um, the last section of that assessment is actually produce plans for the kitchen. Okay. Oh, we have someone. Here. Skype, where are you going? Five, can you hear me? Five, can you hear me? No, I'm going to mute our audio so we, we can hear what I'm saying and then I'll unmute it. Okay. Um, and I want to show you her plans she cre created for that particular design. So just quickly. Okay, so basically uh, for the plans, what you need to produce, you need to produce a floor plan. I'll just quickly, here it is. So have a look at the floor plan. Can you see it guys? Mm -hmm. Yep, good. Um, what does the numbering represent? Sorry? What does the numbering represent? Okay. So when you do your floor plan, you need to put the numbers in for the appliances and all the elements you're going to put into the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And then refer back into your list to those appliances. So you can see that 16 is obviously is the uh, sink. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, 14 is a stove and probably 17, what she put on here, it's a range hood about the above the mm -hmm. stove, okay? So if I show you some more images, that will be easier. So apart from the plan, you need to present a, um, a three elevations, okay? And you need to label them. So uh, what she's done here is that she put the labeling separately to the floor plan, mm -hmm. which is wrong. She needed to combine oh. So basically, when you look at this floor plan, you see what's missing. This is the a little label, which mm -hmm. shows us uh, where the elevations are. So I'm just going to show you the label separately so you can make, it will make sense. So I'm just going to share again that new image. So, now you can see, can you see the labeling now? Mm -hmm. Can you see guys? Yep. So, she put that labeling separately to the floor plan. You should have it all on one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is where you need to put that label. So, what mm -hmm. does this label represent? So, number one, it means that this is that elevation of this wall. So you look in that way, you can see. Can you see? Mm -hmm. And yeah. number two, you look in to at, at this wall. And number three, you look in just at that particular wall. Okay. So basically, when you label it, it must say elevation one out of three, two out of three, and three out of three. Okay? Mm -hmm. so I'm going to show you the elevations which you need to complete for the system as well. So now you can see the elevation number three. Okay. And now yep. it should make sense for you those numbers. Can you see it? Uh -huh. So basically what we have here, number 24 is a cabinetry and number 14 is about the cabinetry. Then 23 is obviously a pantry. And 18, I don't know whether it's a fridge or whatever. 
Yeah. Now we're going to look at the rest of the elevation. So we'll look at number three. What we need to look for now is the elevation number two out of three and one out of three. So we'll have a look at one out of three first. I'm just going to share it with you. Okay, so this is the elevation number one out of three. There is a mistake. She should have said one out of three here. Okay. Um, and so basically she's showing us 24 and 21. Mistake. So 21 shouldn't be there, okay? Because uh, that's where she's referring to the island in the center. Okay, so for the kitchen island, I don't know what this noise came from. Oh, I just moved it. Good. Okay, for 21 for the kitchen island, you're not showing it because you're not positioned at that particular point. You cannot see it on the window. You understand, guys? Yeah. Good. And now we're going to look at the last elevation, which is two out of three. Quickly, I'm just going to share it. Okay. And then it all will make sense. And there are lots of mistakes here as well. So, go share. Okay. So, here the elevation two out of three, what you can see here that she actually positioned the on the floor? So, I don't know. It's kind of floating. <laughs> so I don't know how that happened. And then for some reason, the walls got all this um, uh, lines mm -hmm. there. What does they mean? I don't know. So it shouldn't be there. If it's a wall, it's a wall. No lines mm -hmm. should be present mm -hmm. in that particular area. Now, the range hood, if you look at it, if it's a range hood, that's what I assume it is. Yeah. Like a, um, duck, duction pipe on the top of it. Mm. And obviously, the stove shouldn't be floating. Obviously, all of those sections twenty four should be um, um, should have a, like a vertical lines to show that it's a cabinetry of some sort. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is completely confusing. So what you need to remember that elevation is the view uh, when you look stride at the wall without any perspective yeah so it's basically a section from this corner to that corner mm -hmm. if you look at your kitchen that's what you see mm -hmm. okay so obviously the the stove shouldn't be floating and that should say elevation two out of three again mm -hmm. Is it, I see that she's done everything in pencil. Is it possible to do it all using a design program if you're able to? If you can, yes, absolutely, you can. Um, Is that like what I did? Yes, yes. It, it's not required for that particular assessment. You can just use the pencil and the plans. Print do you out. want me to put the pencil and plan ones in mine as well as the 3D model? No, no, you've already done it. It's all clear. The, the whole okay. Of this assessment is that to show the um, draft, uh, not the draftsman, the builder or uh, whoever's doing your kitchen mm. how to make it, how to put it in. So, obviously, yeah. those plans would be enough for a cabinet maker to make a kitchen, but they need to be correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, if you're doing 3D model, that would be absolutely fantastic for them because if you're using SketchUp, you can even create a cut list of the, each cabinetry for your cabinet maker. Mm -hmm. So you, you can use SketchUp, absolutely you can. Is it possible just with these particular ones, just, so I use uh, Illustrator and InDesign, um, which are just graphic design programs. Um, It'd be much quicker for me to draw up something like what we're looking at now in that program. I don't have, I haven't got to the SketchUp stage of the, the course yet, but um, I, it would be easier for me rather than pencil sketching to do my line drawings in a program. Absolutely, use your okay. program. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, because I didn't use SketchUp. I used that um, online kitchen 3D thing because my SketchUp um, expired. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Whatever program you want to use, guys, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, as long as it represents what it needs to represent. Mm, okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> as long as I see that you understand what that means, etc. And so, obviously, um, have to mention that um, the assessment should be accompanied with the list of the appliances and all the finishes you numbered on the floor plan and elevations. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically you go 14, you're showing me the image, what it is, you're sourcing it from online, from the magazines, from brochures, whatever, and you're giving me a description. So basically mm -hmm. that's what you would give your uh, cabinet maker or kitchen maker person. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you say, okay, I want to go to Harvey Norman, I want to buy this range hood, this is number 14, and I already measured it, it fits in, and that's mm -hmm. where I want it to be. Mm -hmm. So this, this assessment is quite involved um, mm -hmm. in a way. Uh, it seems um, the most um, complex out of the whole design skill assessments, but mm -hmm. I do not require you guys to know the uh, software 100%. All you need mm -hmm. to do is just approximately fit all the things in, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna sit with a ruler and measure whether that range hood's gonna fit or not. I can see it right away. And mm -hmm. mistakes like that when something's floating, obviously need to be avoided. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, any more questions about the assessment number three? Um, yes, do we need to tell you what type of tiles and coloured paint and all that kind of stuff? That's right, absolutely. So you need to specify all the finishes. I'm just going to show you um, the list so you can understand what's required more clearly. Okay. Just quickly yeah oh, okay this one is good uh, let me share with you again okay so now you can see um one more assessment here so what the student did the only one thing she didn't do she didn't number the appliances she selected so you can see now can you see how the norman this is a cook Oh, can you see yeah. that? Yep, yeah, excellent. Yep. So, um, then that's a oven. That's a range hood. That's a fridge. Oh, that's the fridge I'm using. Uh, yep. Yeah. Microwave, sink. Um, what else we've got here? Door finishes for the cup, uh, cupboards um, for the kitchen. Uh, handles, bench top, uh, tap, paint, uh, what else we've got, splash bag, floor, and that's it. So if you want to go above and beyond that, that's, that's pretty much it, what's required. You can also mm -hmm. put the um, Styling. So obviously, you need to put the styling kitchen separately. So, what what's included in styling is um, the kit small kitchen appliances like you know toaster, kettle, you know sandwich maker, maybe mm -hmm. salad, yes. you know uh, chopping boards, whatever you can see in the kitchen, whatever you can put in, maybe a rack for the utensils or maybe mm -hmm. shelf or whatever your kitchen contains in there, it would be right to see the number of styling items. Mm -hmm. okay. Any more questions? I'm okay. okay. I think I'm good. Now, remember that when you put the styling in or um, decorative or decorative items in, please do not place them on the floor plan. And do not yep. number them. Just put it as a, as a separate page because it's just going to look cluttered if you try to put uh, 
all the chopping boards in there and etc. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so for the cabinet maker, we don't want to we don't no. to show it to him. We need to show it to your client, obviously. Sure. Because yeah, the kitchen is not done without those beautiful little things. No. Okay. Now let's get to the assessment number two. If that was assessment number two, what's required? Oh, this is a good example as well. I had a fantastic student. She's now uh, doing the subject number three. That mm -hmm. tune's on Austin Powers. Sorry? This so far? Yeah, that so far is on um, the movie Austin Powers. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. see it recently, so I didn't pay attention. It's in his, like, um, his house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw it when I was watching a movie after you showed me this last, uh, another lesson. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, I've seen that before. That was funny. <laughs> I love the design. It's so amazing. It's so memorable. It's so different. Mm, really. It's really cool. And again, it represents the, um, that particular style, 50s, 60s, just absolutely yeah. 100%. The only one thing which is interesting here is the color, which they selected, but it obviously comes in black and orange and red as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's great. Um, so what she's done, she basically done, uh, found the chair, um, then she traced the model into the black and white image, um, placed the images, written about the blob, about the chair, what it is. Then the next step was just share it quickly. The next step was is to actually redesign it and present it with a sketch. So mm -hmm. before you do that, you, you need to present a number of sketches. Okay. And it's a good idea if you can just email it to me and we can discuss it together. I can just reply to you and say this is good, this is not good and etc. So at least we have some kind of collaboration going and select an idea. So that's what she's done. Basically she changed the bottom of the chair from the mm -hmm. original chair, which looks fine to me, interesting enough. And then she selected the materials and um, the finishes as well. So obviously she replies that stainless steel frame with a different frame from different mm -hmm. materials. So she said, artistic piece, the wooden feet made by hand and stained in a maple color. That's mm -hmm. glass. So she's done the wooden feet as well. And this is upholstered frame. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. if we look at the final work, she also represented another idea. Oh, it's upside down. I'm just going to turn it around. So then she represented another idea with that particular chair, which I thought was much better, if you can see it now. Mm -hmm. So this is the corner sofa. So she's taken it even further. Okay, with the corner sofa, because the previous uh, redesign wasn't changed enough. Okay, mm -hmm. makes sense. So now she redesigned it in a corner sofa. There are quite a few, few things I would like to change, but as an attempt, it looked good to me. In mm -hmm. a way, if you can see that the back of the chair is kind of looks separate to the seating area of the chair, if it makes mm -hmm. sense to you guys. So the design of the bag kind of stands alone compared to the bottom. But what are the most importantly, what happened with the model? When she worked on the model, it actually turned out amazing. So I'm just going to show you the model itself. And that really um, shown the whole complex, the complexity of the idea and how you can see something on a sketch it's actually, you think, might not be workable on the model, but mm -hmm. when you actually create the model, it actually works. So I'll just show you the model. Here's the model. OK. 
Can you see? Mm -hmm. So this is the model. And so obviously she's done an amazing job. If you have a look. Yeah, I, I, I guess I was a little unclear about when we're asked to make a model, what exactly does that mean? Does it mean physically sew something or physically make something? Physically um, make something, yes. And so when I look at the model, it actually works much better than the sketch. And mm -hmm. I can see how this so far can actually work. There are quite a few things like I would change probably more around cushions. Mm -hmm. Uh, and maybe just the shape, maybe this shape should be uh, the Ottoman, which she created as a separate, like a corner piece. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the shape of it should be a little bit more rounder. But mm -hmm. as a result, I was quite pleased because it turned into something more comfortable than it was before. And it turned into something completely uh, different and modern, which could be mm -hmm. used in any house. Mm -hmm. So that's basically what's required, your concept, your idea, how you approach it, how you work with it and uh, how you present it. Now, with creation of your model, you can use any materials you want to. So basically in the assessment, it's mentioned that you can do all white model, okay? So what, this, what it means when you do all white model, it means that you can just uh, use paper, cardboard, you can use a um, plastisol, um, air dry plastisol, or no. any other material in one color. Okay. So you don't need to imitate upholstery or any sort, or you don't need to paint it, etc. That's what you can do. It's just an all white model, which is still acceptable. Okay. Now, would you like me to show you more models? Yeah, I'm curious to see what, how, how other students are doing it. Um, obviously, if you're using like wooden legs and things, I didn't know, I don't know how enough about carpentry to make wooden legs and things, so it was a bit hard no, to know. Yeah. You, don't, you, really don't, you don't need to either because um, you basically just need to imitate it. Okay, so here's another one, just quickly share. I can never that, that one goes to. Okay, just quickly show that. Um, to imitate the wooden legs, you can use cardboard or you can use, you know, uh, air dry uh, clay or any other things. So it doesn't really matter as long as it shows that it's a leg. Mm -hmm. Okay, wishbone chair. Danielle, did you do this one? The wishbone <coughs> chair as well? Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, well, one of the students selected it as well. Cool. <laughs> I'm not sure if you, yeah, if I, I think I put it, this video as well in, um, uh, on the YouTube. So that's oh, what it changes. Oh. And that's her model. Oh, she turned it into a rocking chair. Yeah, that's she right. only turned it into a rocking chair, yeah. So that wasn't enough of the changes, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But it still works for me because she used, um, used different materials and mm -hmm. the approach was minimalistic and clean. Mm -hmm. So I didn't mind it. So, and uh, as the product, it looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. Now we'll have to look at some more ideas. Okay, so all white model, just quickly show you here. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the students did. So she did it simply out of the cardboard. You can see now. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. So you can do that as well. Mm -hmm. But obviously you need to supply the description and all the sketches, yeah. and et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So, and that's the final redesign. I'm just going to show you, share this. That's what it should look like. Mm -hmm. And that's a model and it's sufficient enough for me to have that. Okay. 
So I'm just gonna have to look at some more. Meanwhile, do you have any more questions about anything else? No, I'm all good. Okay, that's good. I think I'm pretty good. Excellent. Well, we have we have seven minutes left. So, I guess also remember that you can always borrow the books and um, use our library online. Okay, do you know how to do that? Oh, I haven't gone in there yet. Um, I'm not in Brisbane, so I can't get to any library, but uh, I haven't gone to the online library net, uh, so I'm not really sure what's in there that I would need to use. I have a lot of magazines and books on design, so I'm probably just using those because they're quickest and easiest at the moment. Oh, that's good, Susie. Sounds good. But what I need to tell you that our library actually will deliver it to your door. So whatever books you want to order, they will deliver it to your door. Oh, okay. So you don't need to be in Brisbane, which is excellent. Is there a, is there a lot in there that other students are using or? Um... Oh, it's hard to say what you're actually looking for. Mm. Okay, so um, you just need to go there. You need to go to the catalog and you need to see what you want to borrow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just going to share Suan's assessment again here. Okay, so um, Suan is an excellent student, so she selected this particular uh, design of a chair. So mm -hmm. she done the sketch. She redesigned it, which I thought was very well done. So completely different style, completely different feel and look of the chair. She selected the upholstery and that's her model. So obviously her yeah. challenge was is to recreate the back of the chair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so according to her sketch, if you look at the sketch, so it looks like something from uh, Art Nouveau style, so very organic and... Um, very gothic. It's got a bit, sort of weird gothic feel about it. Yeah, mm. and then... That's right, compared to the real 70s feel, which the previous mm. team had, as you can see, so um, end of um, 70s, it was designed. And um, yeah, and, and she obviously set up to, you know, had the, the level is too high to, to do that um, detailed work for the back of the chair, but she still managed. Yeah. Okay, so what you need to remember, guys, is when you do your model, think about the material you use and support of that material. So if you use air dry clay and you want to create something like that, intricate and lacy and, you know, very much involved, make sure that you create a frame out of wire first. Mm -hmm. So if I show you what I'm talking about, Vesna's assessment um, submission was the best out of um, how she made her model in that particular case when it required so much uh, intricate work. Mm. Let me just have a look if I actually... Oh, yeah, I do have it, luckily. Did you share? have three minutes? <laughs> okay, so here you go. So Vesna had a pretty good experience with building models from her architectural uh, skills. So she selected that particular chair. Then she created hundreds of sketches, which is fantastic. She sent it to me, we discussed it. We'll look at them. Um, we thought which design is the best. And then um, she recreated the final product. So what she wanted to do, she actually incorporated that particular ornament mm -hmm. in the center of the back. If we come back to the uh, original model, it's much more simple. Mm -hmm. And when we go uh, to her proposal, you can see that it's much more involved. Mm -hmm. So she obviously researched it, she added Art Nouveau, all these organic shapes, and etc. in there. Uh, she also was referring to her particular piece she's got on her balcony here as well. 
She wants okay. grapes and etc. and the female um, character. Mm -hmm. We've drawn it in more details on the next page in the sketches. She researched the materials she wants to use, the colors, the finishes, etc. So absolutely amazing. Now, if we look at the bottom of that page, we can see how she actually recreated the model. Look at this. Mm -hmm. So wow. first of all, uh, what she's done, she um, created a wireframe mm -hmm. for um, that particular model. Obviously, you need to calculate the size you need, and I suggest you guys go in the scale 1 to 20. Mm -hmm. Okay, just remember 1 to 20 is a good scale for furniture modeling. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, then she constructed the model out of wire and then she used that super sculpy clay okay so do not try to find that particular clay because it's uh, one of the special sculpting clays you can just buy a simple air dry clay in in spotlight mm -hmm. like six or seven or maybe ten dollars for a kilo and that will do the job as well so basically you can see the wireframe and then she placed a sticky tape around it. So you can see the wireframe mm -hmm. here, okay? And then she rubbed the sticky tape around because the wireframe wasn't thick enough. Yeah, yeah. So for the clay to catch on, actually stick onto the wireframe, you need to have some kind of adhesive material to it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. obviously it will fall off if it's a metal wireframe. You understand that, guys? Mm -hmm. So you need to put some kind of adhesive, like a paper. You either go around with the paper, sticky tape paper, and, and that will be sufficient enough for you to do. Now, maybe you would need to do two or three wraps around the wire yeah. or the frame with the sticky tape to, to actually build up that thickness you require so then you see how she started building it up here mm. oh, 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 oh. something happened 